today we are going to be making a seafood risotto. In fact, we are going to be making lobster risotto. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. And I'm going to add some tomatoes and zucchini to it. You want to buy lobsters that are alive and you want lobsters that are pretty active and really feisty because that means that they've been out of the water for the least amount of time. You know, lobster meat is very sweet. They come from the ocean. I'm gonna make some water that's salty, but I also want a lot of other aromatics in there. I'm gonna put in some coriander seeds, a whole bunch of thyme, and about three bay leaves to my water, some lemon, some garlic, some white wine, all right, whole bottle, and some salt. So I'm gonna let that come right back to a rolling boil. They're just gonna help bring out and perfume my lobster a little bit without taking over. Get your stock heating up. And then I'm going to start to get the base of my risotto ready. So I'm gonna be dicing my onion. Risotto, by the way, is a cooking method. It is not a type of rice. Risotto really should not have any cream in it at all. What makes it creamy is the starchy grains of rice and the constant stirring, and that's what makes the beautiful texture of risotto. So I'm just getting my onions in there. I'm not turning this on yet. All right, so I'm gonna cook these guys for about 10 minutes. What color do lobsters turn when they're cooked? Red. red. They turn red. So my zucchini, Cut one side off, look, no more rolly. We make a flat side, and I just want the colored part. So here's my sticks, then I'm gonna start to do dices. And the inside is mostly just starchy stuff and the seeds and things like that. All right, so when I handle a tomato, I like to cut these on one side, cut the stem out just one time. Because these have a lot of liquid in them, I'm gonna just take out the whole guts today. So I am using flavors that are not going to overpower my lobster, but that complement it. All right, so now we have sticks and then we're gonna go dices. Then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna start actually sweating my onion. I'm gonna salt my onions a lot right now. You have to season from the beginning. And also I'm just gonna give a little pinch of crushed red pepper just because I, for fun. My onions are not swimming in oil, but they come up about halfway up the sides of where the onions are. All right, so I'm... Now this lobster is not completely cooked all the way through because I want to get that lobster flavor to cook in my rice a little bit and I don't want to overcook the lobster. So now I'm just letting it cool down while I finish up my tomatoes. Tomatoes and lobster go together very nicely. So coat the rice with olive oil and then I spread it out so it's a nice even layer. And what I'm doing is called toasting the rice. Toasting the rice is a wildly important step. All right, I'm gonna put this lobster body in my stock to really drive home that lobster flavor. I twisted the tail off the bottom of my lobster. This stuff, what's coming out of there, the light green stuff is called the tamale, which is the liver, and the dark green stuff, this coral, this is the roe. It's like the lobster caviar. You can totally eat that stuff. My rice is nicely toasted, and I am ready to move on. My next step is going to be adding the wine. And every single time when I add the liquid, I add just enough to cover the surface of my rice. So I kind of want my tomatoes to sort of break apart. So I'm going to be adding my tomatoes now. And I'm gonna add a little bit of salt. So I'm stirring this frequently. All right, so the tails are the big money items. Bend it back, and you can just break it right off, okay? Cut through the shell on the bottom, and then you can just and the whole tail comes right out. All right, so now I'm going to add stock to this till it covers the surface of my rice. Stir this every once in a while. All right, so the claw, use the back of your knife. All right, break this little guy off. 
All right, so there's a big piece of cartilage right in the middle of this claw. So carefully cut it on the top and the bottom of the claw so you can expose this piece of cartilage. All right, now this guy, it's a little arm. So you see how it's flat, sort of like that. So on both of the edges of the flat side, that's where you want to cut. And you pull out all that little arm meat. All right, so I'm just going to bounce over and check my risotto for a second. So I'm adding more stock. I'm also going to add another big money item, which is a spice called saffron. But it has a really strong flavor. It also makes things turn really bright yellow. So for my lobster tail, I'm going to cut it right down the middle and then dices. And fairly largest chunks. You don't you want to know that the lobster's in there. Don't chop up my big money item to like teeny tiny pieces that I can't find anywhere. All right, I'm gonna finish this with parsley at the very last minute. Okay, and it brings a beautiful grassy green freshness to the whole situation. So I'm just gonna shave off the leaves. So at this point, my rice is just about done. And so I'm gonna add my zucchini. All right, I'm gonna stir that in. I'm gonna add my cubed lobster. I'm gonna stir that in. Now, is my risotto flowing? No, it's kind of holding its shape, isn't it? Yeah. So I'm just gonna give it a little bit more liquid just to let it out just a tiny bit. All right, turning my burner off. So the last thing that we're gonna do, I have butter. You want your butter cold and some Parmesan cheese. This is how we set the perfect texture of risotto. It's called the mantecare. Whip the hell out of it! Because you want the butter and the cheese to really come together with the starch and get married. All right, so that was the finishing step, aside from my parsley. The very last thing, stir it. Mm. Mm. All right. So you see how it spreads out? So we're looking for that consistency. And just for fun, there we go. What do you guys think? Ready to dig in? Yeah. yeah. All right.